All right, folks, so should I go my iPad, please? Growing up, it was really hard for me to embrace my hair because I didn't really see anyone who looked like me. Even if people had naturally curly hair, they would straighten it. I used to get chemical relaxers. When I finally cut off all of the processed ends, that natural texture surprised me. I felt kind of defeated. I didn't feel as beautiful. Whenever my hair would start to grow out from that chemical straightener and I would see my kinky roots, that's when the hair hate kicked in. Like, wait. This is how my hair is naturally, and there's something wrong with that. There were not that many products that I could find that were good for my hair. There was just nothing for the in-between texture that I had. So, so, so we had this in the, in the interview there. So this was another one of uh, the stories. Here's where I think uh, for Sundial and Shea where, where they messed up, this could have been averted. One of you announce what he said on our show, that we are doing essentially a documentary where we interview 24 different women from different backgrounds, different ethnicities about their hair and their issues. And now all of a sudden, now, now you have context. Because I think so, so that one minute, the initial one drops, one minute, you don't know what, you, you just think it just came out of nowhere as an ad, versus now you have the context. Uh, and, and Rena, you have an interesting sto uh, story about Shea Moisture as I well, do. being non-black. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've used the product for quite some time. Uh, came in a goodie bag to me five, six years ago. And I realized it was for ki curly hair. And I said, it wasn't kinky, it just said curly on it. So I gave it to a white friend and I gave it to an Indian friend who had curly hair. And then just about three years ago, I was at CVS and I said, this looks really good. The products have become more innovative. They're very unique now. How can they on stay on the shelf at CVS? How can they innovate? if they don't expand their market. And so, I think so, that's so, what so doing. okay, so let me ask you this question. So, sure. are you saying that okay, well if Shea Moisture wants to get your money, that's right. and wants to get your friends money, if their ads are only showing African American, do you subconsciously say, "Well, that's not for me?" Well, you know, look, I, I'm not one of those people that looks at it as, "Yeah, that's not for me." But yeah, I mean, there is that over overtone there, and I and I would maybe go to a store and say, "Oh, no, maybe that's not for me, right?" So, you're right. I, mean, I think I look at it and and I would say my view of this ad is just that they're trying to appeal to everyone, which a company should, because they're trying to grow out of the zone. They're trying to be innovative with their products, and that's the, that's the core of the matter. We got to realize that. Great, right? a lot of African American women they say, "Look, we don't, you know, this is for us, by us. This is this is what it is." Um, but what, what your your take on this? Well, I would I would be with them 100 percent in the sense that Africa has produced everything that created the modern world system, and so this just add this to the list. However, you know, Chinese folks don't say if you're not. Chinese, you can't eat in a Chinese restaurant. What we have to do is do say the opposite. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We have to do two things. We have to stand firm in our culture, and that's our real challenge, as you were saying on the break, uh, Roland. This is a difficult issue because slavery has impacted the way we look at everything. But we have to stand firm in our culture. This is what this is brother doing. This Pan African thing. Maybe he's from the Caribbean. He's dealing with West Africa. But the other side of it is we have to then convince the world to begin to infuse us with the resources we need to stand. And this is a difficult conversation. It's not an it easy. Is Oh, Scott, where's Chris Rock when you need him? Remember the movie Good Hair? Right. This is a microcosm of it, if you will. I don't think there's a big deal in showing different uh, textures of hair, whether you're black, white, yellow, or brown. I think the intro that you talked about is important. It's about expanding the market. And uh, black people and people of color, we take possessory interests with no investment in black companies, black shows, That's black right. everything. That's we right. do. And until we match up the possessor, the possessory interests with our investment, then we can really complain. Right now, we just complain because we don't like the ad, and maybe the ad could have been done differently, but we got to do take ownership, not just an interest in these companies if we want them to last as African-American-owned companies. We have to recognize that other women can use these products, too. That's the big thing here. One of the women featured in these ads is Irene Khan, a woman I've known for a long time, and she has very curly hair, and she had problems with it for years. I'm talking years back, and I'm delighted and to see her where? feet. She's Bangladeshi. I'm mm -hmm. Indian-American. She's from Bangladesh, mm -hmm. and I think that's really interesting because she's had the same struggle. She grew up in Michigan, and she profiled them on a video log channel years ago. So, 
so, she loves this product. So, so the point you're making is that just like a lot of black women have had hair issues, yes. other women of color right. uh, have had hair issues. Oh, yeah. and, and, and that's, and, that's, and again, We're looking at. black gotcha. men too, Roland. I mean, look, man, between Murray's, Dax, and everything else. <laughs> well, if you I got, got hair, you if you yeah. got hair, you don't have any issues. Right, let me go to the break. I'll be back. News 1 now in 60 seconds on TV One. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. And we will keep focused on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.